science fiction is slowly but surely becoming reality. If you are a programmer yourself, you're probably either very excited or very scared. Codex, the language model that has learned to code, will be changing everything, not just the life of programmers. One year ago, GPT-3 shocked everyone when it was able to read off English and Chinese text that was not in its training data. The feat was quickly dismissed by AI experts as a fluke and GPT-3's creators explained that the system was actually not cap- Oh no, don't be so humble GPT. Even GPT-3, a model not trained for programming, already showed a quite impressive set of skills in many different programming languages. So, the question was on the table. Just how good will a model be if we train it with source code? All the source code we can find. It had to be incredible. And now we know it is. Yesterday, OpenAI had a live stream showcasing different kinds of problems. I want to show you some of that. They start out by telling the model to add this image of a rocket ship to the page. And yeah, it works. It just works. Make it be small, smallish. Nice. Cropping it. How many times did you have to look up stuff like this? It's amazing to me how non-robotic those prompts are. It's not far from what you would ask a human to do. It's not a complete description of every single detail. The AI just has to decide how fast the spaceship is going. I like how it understands that a random position should probably still be one inside the window. It, it isn't obvious. Wow, that's a long function. One you could probably write too, but would you get it right the first try? I'm not sure. You can tell the human knows what they're doing? Sure, you couldn't code a full-fledged game like this, but man, it's really impressive. Checking for overlap every 10 milliseconds. Which overlap? It understands the context perfectly. Wow. Wow, that's a game. That's a working game. If this is how the future looks like, I'm in. Codex is fine-tuned from GPT-3, so it doesn't just know programming languages, it also knows natural language. They fine-tuned it with data from 54 million repositories on GitHub, containing over 150 gigabytes of Python files. That's insane. If you heard of GitHub's Copilot project, you might be wondering if it's related. And the answer is a resounding yes. Some modified version of Codex powers Copilot. It is probably trained on even more code as it's able to write in dozens of languages. Of course, the most popular ones also work the best. A funny experiment they described in the paper is using the model the other way around. So producing a text describing a code. And of course, it contains comments like, I just found this function online and this test is not correctly written and it's not my solution. At this point you might be wondering, how good is it really? Is it better at programming than me? The good answer, or maybe the disappointing one, is no. No, it really isn't at that point. They created a set of 164 handcrafted programming challenges. Challenges you could find in a coding interview, for example. But admittedly, you would be very excited if you got one of those problems in a coding interview if you are at least a decent programmer. 
we are talking about problems like counting the vowels in a string. When using 100 samples, meaning 100 different attempts, Codex is able to solve 72% of problems contained in the dataset. A good result in my opinion, considering when tests are in place, it is no problem at all to generate a large number of solutions until one works. Even with 10 samples, it can almost solve 50% of those problems. Going down to one sample, the number drops down to 27%. We're not at a point where you can just stop learning how to code and let the AI do it. But it's still really, really useful. One point I really want to drive home is that an automated coding model doesn't have to be anywhere near as good as a human to be useful. First of all, not everybody is a programmer and even if you are, Codex probably remembers syntax better than you do. There are many ways a programmer can spend their time, and a lot of it isn't thinking deeply about how to engineer the most efficient way to solve a really complex problem. It's how do I do a HTTP fetch again? Wait, wait a minute, how do I check if the string contains X? Or, this problem really isn't that hard, but I still have to write the code. Just personally speaking, I write a lot of code, probably every day, and I can't wait to get my hands on this. But, and that's a big but, I think everything I said is nothing compared to what we will probably see just a few years away. I believe very strongly that models like this will fundamentally change how we will interact with technology. Instead of googling how to remove a background in Photoshop, you just ask it to. It generates a piece of code that interfaces with Photoshop that does just that. Could you send Peter the latest update with instructions on how to get it running on Windows? Could you uh, copy all my music to the USB stick I just plugged in? Uh, could you delete my browsing history when, uh, you, you know, when you think it's appropriate? Sure, no problem. Models like this are the bridge. The bridge between humans and computers. They talk both languages. They understand what you want. They understand how to do it. Neural networks had a problem since their inception. They are a black box. We don't know why they work, we don't know why they fail, we don't know when they will fail. But code, code we can read, code, code we can test. I really believe this is a paradigm shift in how we think about human-computer interaction and I can't wait to see how crazy it will get. If you want to be part of that journey, make sure to subscribe. Have a great day. Peace. By the way, if you're watching this on August 11th or 12th, check out the OpenAI Codex Challenge, where you can compete and collaborate with this model.